This is the Prusa i3 Mark III. In tech years, it's a bit old now, but it has a special place in my heart for being an incredibly reliable machine. It's also just kind of iconic, right? but I barely use it anymore because today it's not hard to find a 3D printer that's twice as fast and has built-in cloud functionality, both of which are amazing features for impatient people like me who are also allergic to SD cards. Now, I could replace this 3D printer with the newer Mark IV that has these things, but that's really expensive and way too easy, so instead I'm going to turbocharge my 3D printer with this. This kit will make it twice as fast with some fancy new electronics and also add a touchscreen and support for cloud file transfer. This is an official kit by the way, which includes all the parts, electronics and instructions to take it halfway from a Mark III to a Mark IV, which I guess is why it's called the Mark 3.5 upgrade. Uh, you can also get the Mark 3.9 upgrade that adds an improved extruder as well, or go all the way to the Mark IV upgrade that includes better motors as well. And it should make your 3D printer indistinguishable from an actual Mark IV. Like, what other company lets you do this? What other industries is this even possible in? For real, I'd love to know. Now, this kit is mostly just a heap of wires, but there's also gummy bears to get you through the arduous upgrade process and a little roll of PET G filament. And that's because before we can start upgrading, we first need to use the printer to 3D print some of the upgraded parts that we'll need. Kind of like training your replacement before getting fired. Anyway, this took about 8 hours and the files came pre-sliced on printables, which was handy. Most of the parts came out great, but there's a few tiny cosmetic issues from where I didn't clean the print surface very well. Whoops. Before I start the upgrade, please join me in sending off my Mark III with one final print. My maker coin took about one and a half hours and I used this King Rune Golden Silk PLA and I'll run the same print again after the upgrade and hopefully it'll at least cut that time in half. Now, let's upgrade. The first step is to disassemble everything that we don't need anymore. And I actually got stuck on this step for a bit because my fingers were too fat to grip the connectors and then pull them out easily. But after I eventually managed it and removed the old electronics box, the next step was to remove the heat bed and the wire covers. then flipping the entire thing on its side and removing the old cables and screen. Uh, then the instructions told me not to open the gummy bears yet, but it was already too late for that. Step two was adding the new electronics box. This time it's metal rather than 3D printed and it just slots into the back using some screws. Then after adding some thermal pads, we can place the XBuddy board inside. And this is also the exact same board that the new Mark IV is using as well. Step three is installing the new display. But first we need to do some cable management prep by adding these horrible cable clips. I honestly felt like I was going to break my thumbs with the amount of pressure that they need to snap into place. The Prusa employee in the comments says not to use the hammer, but if you're struggling like I was, just do it anyway. There's spares in the kit if you break any. After adding the screen, I did some cable management, hooked up some cables to the PSU, then even more cable management. The cable situation has to be the worst part of this upgrade, maybe because it's an upgrade rather than a whole new device, but it feels like such an afterthought. If all the cables were just a centimetre longer, for example, it would be massively improved. But instead, the cables need to be pulled tight to make sure they get from A to B okay. And there wasn't much I could do to stop these cables from being pinched between the printer and whatever surface I had it on. While it might not be bad, it just feels very precarious. The next step was the heat bed. And I made the same mistake as Pantry Bear here. And if you're following any instructions on the Prusa site, the comments are amazing. I just wish I was smart enough to read the comments before things went wrong, but luckily it was an easy fix. The next two steps were a massive pain trying to assemble it all while keeping it in my hands at the same time. And the pictures make it look straightforward, but these steps really felt more like a hack than what should be in a final product. And again, if the instructions aren't making sense or you feel like they're missing something, just make sure you take a look at the comments. And after reattaching the heat bed, connecting it to power and doing some more cable management, it's time to move on to the extruder. Now the Mark 3.5 upgrade doesn't include any extruder upgrades, but it does want us to remove the existing nylon reinforcement from the cable and put in an even thicker piece of nylon. And I'm assuming because the printer will be able to move much faster with the upgrade, the existing reinforcement probably just wasn't up to the job. After that, we can use more of our 3D printed parts and route the extruder cables along with the X motor cable into the electronics box. We also need to use adapter cables to make our old motors compatible 
comfortable with the new board. Then we can cover up the electronics box, slap on some new stickers, and I think we're done. Now the only thing left to do is to plug it in and turn it on. It ran through a few tests, but I noticed the nylon that supports the heat bed cable got pushed through too far and was colliding with the frame if that makes sense. This was the same part that I said felt more like a hack than a final product earlier. And honestly, I think this whole DIY heat bed cable connector is a bit sus, especially at a time when heat bed cable connectors are under close scrutiny. Anyway, it passed all the self tests and calibration, and we have a working upgraded 3D printer now. Uh, except for the touchscreen, which I thought I must have broken, but nope, to get touchscreen support you need to install unreleased firmware and manually enable it. What? <laughs> Anyway, I printed my Maker Coin again, and this time it only took 40 minutes, a bit under half the time it took me previously, which is only a few minutes slower than my fastest 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Then I printed two of these crystal cluster bookends by Triple G Workshop at 0.2mm layer height, and these took about three and a half hours each, and I printed them with this Kingroon Silk Rainbow Macron filament, and by the way, thanks to Kingroon for providing the filament in this video, I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm definitely going to be using these rolls in a lot more projects, and I've put links below if you're interested in any of these colors. Before the upgrade, this would have taken a whopping 6 hours, and on my X1 Carbon using the default 0.2mm strength profile, it also would have taken 3.5 hours. However, the 0.2mm standard profile only took around 2 and a quarter hours. So while the Mark 3.5 isn't as fast as the X1 Carbon, it is however around the same speed as the new-ish Bamboo Lab A1, which is a more apples to apples comparison. Getting to the real question though, is this kit worth it and is it actually any good? Um, I'll start by saying that the kit is fine, it does what it promised to do, and it does it well. Some of the instructions, particularly around the cable supports in the heatbed and extruder, are a bit odd and a bit fiddly, and you need to pay close attention to make sure you don't damage any wires. But considering that this is only an upgrade, I think they've done the best that they were able to do. And I think it's amazing that it exists in the first place. I really hope that one day I get to live in a world where everything is as easily upgradable as Prusa products. So I haven't had time to try out the cloud functionality yet, but if you're interested, keep an eye out for a follow-up video after I've had time to test this upgrade out over a few months. The next question was, is it actually worth it? And for most of you, it probably isn't. Here in Australia, this upgrade cost around $400 for what is essentially a new display, new mainboard, a metal box, and a heap of wires and screws. For the same price, you could buy a whole new 3D printer from a different company if you wanted to. So that being said, I think the people who will get the most value from this upgrade are producer enthusiasts who don't mind spending a bit of extra cash to breathe new life into an older machine, or for people who managed to pick up a Mark III for a really good deal and want to bring it up to modern specs. In the end, like always, it all depends on what you value. Please let me know your thoughts or questions and I'll try my best to answer them. Cheers.